Okay, today we have with us a guest for our History 101 Bible class. This is Lesson 3, and in Lesson 2 we talked about our four ruling uh, leaders who started, who began the Church of God by Faith. And today we are going to be talking about the first three bishops. And our guest today is um, a descendant of one of our leaders. I'm going to let her introduce herself to you and I'll be asking her questions that I know you would be interested in hearing. Some of the questions will be pertinent to the um, lesson points that we have for the, today's lesson as she goes through them. I will be addressing, she will be addressing number one, number three, number six, number seven, and number eight on your planning sheet that will be displayed. So at this time I'd let, like for her to introduce herself to you and then we'll go on with the interesting part of the interview. My name is Freddie Matthews and I'm the granddaughter of Bishop Aaron Matthews. Now all of these men thrived on a strong prayer life and she's going to share with you some key points about how Bishop Aaron Matthews, her grandfather, and also her uncle, Bishop Willie Matthews, W.W. W. W. Matthews, about their life, their prayer life. So I'm going to give her a few minutes to talk about them, and that that's the first two bishops about their prayer life. All right, my granddaddy, Daddy Bishop Aaron Matthews, was the type of man he was, he didn't do a lot of talking. He talked if you asked him a question or whatever you wanted to talk about, but he was not a, um, what you call a, just talking to be just talking. He didn't do that. He was a very quiet, uh, preserved man. He, he, he was a man of faith. He believed in healing. He believed in praying, anointing you with oil, and asking God to heal you, and you believed that God healed you, and you was healed. He, um, was a good family man. He loved his family. He loved children. He loved everybody, but he had a special love for children. And he always, we always had children around the house because I had a brother. And, uh, you know, all the boys and the girls would come up on a Saturday afternoon and we would uh, study the Sunday school lesson and sing songs and all like that. But at a certain time of the evening, he'd tell you, all right, it's time for break up go home. But he loved us to be around us. He loved it, all of us to be around him. And that's the way he did it. And he just loved the people of God everywhere. He was a man of faith. I've seen daddy get up and say the Lord hey, wanted to send him somewhere to run a revival or whatever. And he didn't have no money. But he trusted God. What he did was packed up the car, told mamas, come on, get the children ready. And he would pack them suitcases and get in that car and get up to the corner and get out the car to get the gas just like he had some money. Somebody come along and say, hey, Bishop, how you doing this morning? Mm -hmm. And speak to him. And when he knew the thing, they would give him just what he needed. And that's the way we live, by faith. We didn't, wasn't no begging people. <laughs> My daddy kept plenty of uh, a big garden. And when he would, um, uh, you know, go out and pick the peas of watermelons and all that kind of stuff. He would always have enough. He never had just a little bit just for our family. He always had enough to give to the community, especially the household of faith, the people that's in the church. He would have that for them. And we used to sit a basket on the back bench in the church with eggs. We had chickens. And so he would tell them, the deacons would tell them, anybody need some eggs? get you some but leave some for somebody else don't try to get them out <laughs> and you know whatever we had he we had a milk cow so we had plenty of milk and plenty of butter he would tell them y'all come on over to the house bring your container and get your milk and mama would cut a big slice of butter and they would that's the way we live we live to please to help one another not everything for yourself we had a big house we had four bedrooms and I'm telling you, when I remember a lot of times they come in there in my room and tapping me on the shoulder, telling me to get up. I had to go get in the bed with Mama because we had company. But that wasn't a big thing. We was used to that. Take people in, 
till they get on their feet and and uh, give them give them what they need, meet the needs of them, and then when they got up, they can move on. That's that's what we did. He said he would never build a house just big enough just for his family. Mm -hmm. And that's the way it was. Love kept the church of God by faith together. And the men of God that was involved in it, that's what they did. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's that. Now I can attest to that account as well. That was my first experience of seeing um, chickens uh, butchered and prepared for the yeah. table with mm -hmm. through, was through Daddy Bishop. In the right. time that I was there, I'd sit on the steps and watch him wring the necks of the chickens, mm -hmm. and he was you teaching me a lesson and showing me how you you preserve and how you prepare food. Mm -hmm. And uh, it wasn't too long after that, and you know, those chickens were pre prepared by Mother Matthews and on the table, not mm -hmm. only for us, but for the community, yeah, well, right. the as Miss Freddie said. Now, what do you know about your Uncle W.W. W. Matthews, his prayer life? Oh, Papa was Uncle Papa. Mm -hmm. He was a man of God. He loved children also. And he was a praying man. I never seen, he had the gift of prayer. Like his mother, Mother Nancy Matthews, she, she had, the, God gave her the gift of tongues. So the God gave him a gift of prayer. Some people are gifted to pray. Some people pray because they know they should pray. But he was gifted to pray. I've never seen anybody pray like him until he just go out into another, another world. And he would pray, I, I've seen him pray like almost two hours. I mean, just talking to the Lord. And uh, till he didn't even know who he was the, during the time he was praying and whatnot. And uh, God blessed him wonderfully because he um, had uh, young people that he loved the young people and he would get them together and take them around to different churches and stuff. He would run, I, don't, I wouldn't say revival, but they would have Bible study and all of that. And even my daughter, Carla, she got saved <laughs> and traveled with Papa reading the Bible for him and all that type of stuff. And uh, he loved them and they loved him. And uh, they just, you know, just loved being with the people of God. And and if other young people saw them living like that, then they were drawing other young people to the church. So that's what they did. Singing, praying, and doing what God would have them to do. Mm -hmm. And I was uh, fortunate enough to meet and to know him as well. Mm -hmm. As I mentioned earlier, he was the one who performed the marriage ceremony for my mom and dad. And yep. this is how my mother ended in, up in Jacksonville. Mm -hmm. um, Bishop Willie asked my, he was not Bishop then, but he was traveling around and right. asked my grandmother, Martha, if yep. my mm -hmm. mom could travel with mm -hmm. him to sing mm -hmm. to Jacksonville. Right. And when she got here to Jacksonville, of course, she uh, met my father. Mm -hmm. And after a period of time, they were married to each other. Right. And um, that's how we ended up here in Jacksonville. But it was through, through the connection right. of Bishop Willie Matthews, which mm -hmm. was the son of, of Bishop Aaron Matthews. And um, that, that same, 50 years later, that same bishop came back and, and redid the marriages, reviewed the marriage vows with my mom and my mm -hmm. dad. He was just that kind of person. Right. Loved young, old, mm -hmm. middle, didn't charge mm -hmm. anything, mm -hmm. anybody. Mm -hmm. He never wanted anything from no anyone way. but just to love them. That's right. And he he received that from his mother and his father. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, now um, we're going to talk a little bit about um, also the transition from how the first two bishops were from the same family. They were Matthews. Then somehow the baton was turned to the McKnights, and our guest is going to kind of share with you her knowledge of how she heard it came forth from the mantle from Bishop Willie Matthews to Bishop McKnight, James McKnight Sr. Well, first of all, my granddaddy and Ella McKnight Sr. were good friends, and, he, and Bishop McKnight, well, the older Bishop Knight Knight, his father. his father, he was a man of God, and he was a man that had lots of children. He had plenty of land. He had plenty of hogs and cows, and you know, and 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 they would uh, swap. I think Dad would get pigs from him and raise them up, and then slaughter them, and vegetables and all that kind of stuff. But he was a man of God, 
uh, brother, um, Elder McKnight was a true man of God. He um, was the husband of a wife and he had his children. He raised them in the church. They came up knowing who God was. You could tell that because all of them are saved now. And they, te they going on what they was taught when they were younger. And uh, that's what happened. And uh, that's what they did. And Elder McKnight, uh, after he proceeded on, went on to be with the Lord. And his son and uh, Uncle Papa Matthews, Bishop, they... Um, was long, I guess about the same age. Of, no, not the same age because Papa was older. But anyway, they fell in love with one another. Of course, they already did, but I mean, they really got close. And uh, he would go and stay with them, uh, uh, Reverend McKnight, for some time a month. Stay down there in Gainesville in the house with him. And uh, when he had the barber shop, he'd go down there to the barber shop and he would cut his hair and all that type of stuff. And that's how the love connection came in and the love of God because what he knew he taught it to him mm -hmm. and they passed it on because some way or another I, I believe that God had already showed them what to do and I remember when they had the um, election at the temple in Ocala they was trying to select one of the people to vote for who they wanted to be a bishop because Papa was getting ready to um, retire and she's speaking of Bishop W.W. W. Matthews mm -hmm. now, the second bishop getting yeah. ready to he, retire. He was getting ready to retire, and, and he wanted to know um, what did the people uh, think about who they wanted to be the next bishop. They had a lot of stuff, but when it all came down, the Lord selected Bishop McKnight, the bishop that we had before his son took over. And that's how the mound was passed. Another thing you got to remember that Bishop Aaron Matthews, he didn't have but three sons, and mm -hmm. uh, Aaron Jr., <laughs> my daddy passed, he was the middle child, and Uncle Papa, so Aaron Jr. was the bishop, I mean he was the, the deacon of the Church of God by Faith, I would call it, because he knew that Bible back and forth, he knew the Word of God. So. You know, we, we're giving them some years of service, of faithful service. And all of these men, and I just thank God that I was able to witness all right. four. Right. So was Miss Freddie. Mm -hmm. And she talked about her grandfather, uh, Aaron Sr., Bishop Aaron Sr., and his, his son, Bishop Willie mm -hmm. Matthews. Mm -hmm. I would like to say this, too. I think the another thing of uh, why the church with the bishops stayed together like they did because we was incorporated. Mm -hmm. If we had not have been incorporated, we'd have been just like some of the other churches. A little church here, mm -hmm. a little storefront over there, mm -hmm. and a little bit of stuff going over here, and you do what you want to do, this mm -hmm. one do what they want to do. But they got together, and they prayed, mm -hmm. and they fasted about that thing, mm -hmm. and they agreed that's what the Lord wanted them to do, and that's what they did. They had to, the Lord had to be injected in there because mm -hmm. they didn't know nothing about my granddaddy was a railroad man. Mm -hmm. uh, John Bright, Bishop, mm -hmm. I mean, he was a, 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 he was a brick mason. Yeah, he was a brick mason. And, uh, you know, they were just common people like anybody else. And God just saved them, built them up, baptized them with the Holy Ghost, mm -hmm. and they was so in love with God till they did what they told them to do. And they got together and they prayed about that thing. The, God gave them the name of the church, told them what to do, and they did it. They got a charter. It's a lot of churches don't even have a charter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They, uh -uh. they don't have mm -hmm. no charter. They don't have a charter. But we had a charter way back then, not, mm -hmm. not two or three years ago. That's right. Mm -hmm. So I believe with all my heart that that's what happened, incorporated. So if you incorporate, that means you're together. Mm -hmm. You're together. Mm -hmm. If you're not incorporated, you can do what you want to do. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason why I get. I know that's the reason why they want to keep it like that because it's good for us to love one another mm -hmm. and be in the same situation. You know, as far as the church is concerned, loving and trying to do the right thing and not trying to spread out and go somewhere else. And you got something over here and. You know, all that type of stuff. We see it all the time in other churches. 
but we are the Church of God by Faith in cooperated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I just want to say, add to that, we just, I just, I'm so grateful for that. We have one bishop. Right. Um, and uh, that bishop actually assigns and he has ruling elders. That's right. That has maintained. We don't mm -hmm. have a moderator no. anymore, but we still maintain the bishop. Right. The doctrine of the mm -hmm. church and the ritual, of course, we know right. has been revised several mm -hmm. times. But those basic principles mm -hmm. and doctrine, mm -hmm. which comes from the word of God. Oh, yeah. Our bishops are still standing on that. Yeah. So we want to just say thank you to Miss Freddie, thank grandchild you. of our original bishop, the first bishop, Bishop Aaron Matthews, and the niece the niece of Bishop Willie W. Matthews. And thank you so much, and thank we appreciate all that you are doing um, to share. We just want to say thank you, and I know we're going to get lots of um, clicks on this one because I, it's something that's been in my heart. I've been wanting her to be able to share, and hopefully we're going to look forward to seeing if we can make some contact with uh, Elder John Bright's family, who I think are still here in Jacksonville, and maybe do interviews with some more of the bishops' families. Thank you very much.